Welcome to the Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen, Outdoors Edition. I'm Chef Erica, and I'm joining you here today in our beautiful tree-lined, sunny-skied outdoor kitchen to present to you our incredible veal rack. This is a super deluxe, super high quality rack of veal, 100% American domestic meat only, is what we sell at Prairie Street. And this is a very special cut of meat. This is something you'd wanna do for like a really special occasion, a dinner, a celebration, or if you just feel like treating yourself, you could serve it whole like this, sliced up in individual chops, or you could buy one, take it home, portion it out and cook it over the course of a couple of different meals. It's really versatile and really delicious and it really is a celebratory kind of cut. So what I'm going to do with this today is our roasted garlic and herb crusted veal rack with roasted ratatouille. So let's get started. First things first is we're gonna get this ready to go onto the grill. So what I'm going to do is of course season it up with some coarse kosher salt. So be generous when you're seasoning up that meat. Remember, a lot of this salt is going to fall off as you cook it, but meat likes salt. The salt helps to create a really nice crust on the meat, so don't be cheap with the salt. Pepper, totally up to you. If you like it, use it. If you don't, leave it off. I like a little pepper on here. So some coarsely ground pepper, just like that. I'm gonna just kind of pat that in. And then the other side I can season once it's on the grill. Because if I flip this over now, I'm gonna lose a lot of that seasoning. So I'm gonna put this fat side onto the grill first, and then I can always season the other side. Okay, so we're gonna transition now to getting this onto that grill so I can get that nice sear on it. So for this first step, I want my grill really hot because I'm looking to sear, I'm looking for caramelization and color. In the second phase of this, we're gonna lower the temperature on that grill and use indirect heat. That's when we turn the grill more into an oven. So let's go. Ooh, that's nice and hot, that feels great. I'm gonna pick up this beautiful big rack of veal. And remember, I'm gonna put it seasoned side down first, just like that. And I'm just looking to get some color on it. This is where we get some flavor and some color. Now I can season that second side. It's a lot easier this way than trying to flip it over on your cutting board. So anytime you're thinking about doing that, if you have a big piece of meat, just season the presentation side, the side that's going down first, and then you can flip it on the grill and season your second side. So just like that. Now, while that's getting some color on it, I wanna talk to you about what's going in this paste. So roasting garlic is a way of turning your garlic into something really sweet and caramelized and sticky and delicious, and you do it by literally taking a whole head of garlic, you just slice off that stem end, that little pointy top, you put a little olive oil on it, and you wrap it up in foil, and you put it in your oven. It takes 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the garlic, and it's done when your garlic is soft and squishy, and it pops right out like that. So I'm gonna take that roasted garlic in a minute, and I'm gonna mash it up with my herbs and the other ingredients. So here's some roasted garlic that I had already popped out of that whole head of garlic like that. So what I'm gonna do is take all that delicious roasted garlic, take my knife and just smash it, just like that. And you see, it's just it just melts basically under the weight of your knife. It's so soft. And this roasting process takes away all of that really strong garlic taste. So now this is very mellow and very sweet. And I'm gonna scoop this into a bowl. Okay, now this is a combination of herbs that I've chopped up. So it's parsley, rosemary, thyme, oregano. This could be any combo of herbs you like, but you want it to be those, like what I call woody herbs in there, your rosemary and your thyme for sure, because those are full of beautiful essential oils that are going to perfume that meat. And then the parsley adds really nice color. And what else do I have in here? I think I have some oregano in here today. So any of those, that's gonna go with my roasted garlic. Now this is one of my favorite kind of secret magic ingredients. This is preserved lemon. And this is a spicy preserved lemon paste. You can buy uh, preserved lemons that are spicy, ones that aren't spicy, pickled lemons, anything kind of in that family is great. And if it's not a paste, you just smash it up with your knife, crush it up, put it in a food processor, or you can actually buy the paste version. I'm gonna add some of that, because it adds really nice pungency, a little salty tang to this. 
Remember that veal is a lot milder than beef, so you don't get that strong mineral flavor that you get from beef. Veal is a much sweeter, more mild meat, so we like to pair it with some kind of more complex, kind of bold seasonings like this. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of salt to our crust too, even though we seasoned up the meat. A little bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper, and then some olive oil, just to kind of moisten it, pull it all together. Mix up this paste, and then we're gonna check out our veal rack in a second. I'm just gonna get that all combined. A Little more olive oil. We want it to be kind of loose enough that we can spread it around, just like that. Okay, let's check out our veal now. So we're gonna take a peek underneath and see where we're at. Perfect, that looks great. It's a big piece of meat. I might need a forklift to turn this over. <laughs> Up and over, boom, there we go. So we've got really nice color on that fat that was along the back here, that fat cap is rendering, so it melted a little bit, it got kind of roasty, it's gonna be amazing. I'm not gonna give the second side as long because it doesn't have that coating of fat. The second side, I'm more doing just for a little bit of flavor. It's just gonna kind of kiss the grill there for a minute. Now, when I'm ready to roast this in the grill as if it were an oven, I am gonna lower the temperature of my grill from high down to maybe a low, kind of medium low, so that we use it more like an oven. And I'm going to transfer the meat to a pan. You can use a cast iron skillet, you could use a roasting pan, something that you're okay with putting on the grill like that. Now, wait till you see this pan that we're going to use. <laughs> this is the big pan that we're using. This is a 14 inch cast iron skillet. I'm gonna put it right here on my board, like that. And let's grab that veal now. Okay, so that's gonna go in my skillet, just like that. And it fits nice in there, and a snug fit. Now, when you cook things with bones that are exposed like this, the bones are going to darken in the oven or on the grill. So if you prefer to keep the bones pale, here you take a strip of aluminum foil and just wrap it, like make almost like a little envelope around the bones, that'll keep them pale. I'm okay with the bones getting dark. I kind of like a, a rustic look on my food. So now this whole big operation is gonna go onto the grill. We're gonna lower the heat and we're gonna leave it. It's probably gonna take about an hour on a medium low heat. But what's really important is that we just cook it to the right temperature. Now veal is a meat that we like to keep pink on the inside, but not rare, right? So it's not like a steak where we want a rare or a medium rare. We want kind of a nice overall pale rosy pink. So that's usually a target temp of about 135 to 140. So what I'm gonna do is cook this until that internal temp hits about 128 to 130, and then I'm gonna let it sit and rest. And when large cuts of meat like this are resting, the temperature goes up. It's called carryover cooking because there's so much heat built up inside of it. So I'll pull it out probably about 128, 130, We'll let it rest for a good 20 to 25 minutes, and then we'll serve it up, and it'll be amazing. So before it goes in there now, of course, we have to put the paste on it. I'm just gonna spread this all over the meat. And there are strong flavors in this paste, so you don't need like a really thick layer of it. You just need a light coating of it, of our crust, just like that. And it sticks nicely because that roasted garlic is so sticky, it acts as like, a, like an adhesive and it holds that crust onto the meat. Okay, so this is gonna go back on the grill now, which I'm gonna use as an oven, like I said. But maybe you don't wanna put it outside, you know, maybe it's raining, maybe you wanna cook inside. Totally fine too, the dish comes out exactly the same beautifully if you do the whole thing inside. You can sear it in a cast iron pan on your stove top and then transfer it right to the oven. It doesn't have to be on the grill. I'm just doing it on the grill because we're outside. It's beautiful. It's the end of summer. We're taking advantage of the weather, basically. So either one is great. Now when this goes in, we're also gonna put this in. This is my roasted ratatouille. We're just gonna season that up with some of our good olive oil. 
and use oil that tastes good. Olive oil is someplace where you don't want to compromise. Buy the best quality oil because you want it to taste great. So some good extra virgin olive oil, of course, some coarse kosher salt, a little pepper if you like it. Maybe you have some herbs, some thyme sprigs, rosemary, you could throw that on. I also have garlic cloves on here, halved large garlic cloves or whole garlic cloves. You can roast those up, a few little tomatoes. So that's gonna go on too, and that's gonna roast. If you're doing it inside in the oven, same thing. Just put this on one rack and this on another rack. Okay, so I'm gonna open this back up and I'm going to now move my giant pan. It's a good thing I do a lot of weight lifting onto my grill. And I'm gonna move my roasted ratatouille pan onto there. We're gonna lower that temp, close it up, and we'll come back. In about 45 minutes, we'll start checking the temperature on that veal because we certainly don't wanna overcook it. Remember, we're looking for that target temp rested 135 to 140. If you like your meat a little more well done, take it out at about 135, let it carry over a little bit. We're gonna come back and check this in a little while. Okay, let's get that veal off of the grill. One final check of the temp. I'm gonna go in from the end, make sure we are at our perfect, one, I'm gonna say 130, 132, perfect. Because remember, we want that to carry over as it rests. So it's gonna carry over to about 135, 140, which for veal is perfect. So we're gonna get that out of the pan. Now, it's big, it's awkward. Get yourself some good tongs, use a towel, be careful. And that's going right on my cutting board, just like that. And here is that roasted ratatouille. We took this off a little while ago because these got done a lot faster than the veal. These only took about 30 minutes. So these are ready to go. Leave those off to the side. And now check out this rack. This is amazing looking. You see how the crust got all nice and golden brown and crispy and the veal is super juicy and it's at that perfect temperature and I am super excited. We're gonna slice this one up and get it plated. Here we are. This is our roasted garlic and herb crusted veal rack. It's come off the grill, it's rested, which is super important. Of course, we know this with meats, we have to let it rest so that all our juices have time to settle down inside and they don't come flooding out when we cut it. But also, we wanna let it rest so that we hit the perfect temperature. Now, the perfect temperature for a veal, in my humble opinion, is a perfect 140 inside. That's gonna give you this really nice uniform pink. More done than medium rare, a little less than medium, kind of that perfect sweet spot. So when I took it off of the grill, it was at about 130, 132. We let it rest for a good long time, 20, 30 minutes, and now we are right there on the nose. Okay, let's cut this baby open and see how it looks. So you're gonna wanna have a really nice, long, flexible slicer for this. This is where you wanna use a good knife. This is an incredibly beautiful, precious piece of meat. Use a good knife, treat it with respect. So I'm gonna slice this just right down the middle between those ribs, just so we can get a great look at this. Oh my gosh, look at that color on the inside, that is perfectly cooked veal. It's just got that rosy pink color all across it. It's so juicy still. The juices are just like pooling on the surface. Oh, it looks amazing. I can't wait to eat this. And then I'm just gonna cut off a single chop from here. And I'm gonna be serving this with some ratatouille. It's like a roasted ratatouille. So ratatouille is a traditional Provencal French summer dish of peppers and zucchini and eggplant and tomatoes. You basically just stew it all down. What we did is we just roasted those vegetables and then kind of stewed them at the last minute with some tomato. People, look at that. That is insane looking and it is dripping with juice. So I'm gonna just lay it on my plate here right over that ratatouille. I mean, you don't need anything but that. That is just a spectacular dish. So there you have it, our roasted garlic and herb crusted veal rack with roasted ratatouille. Incredible, you have to make this. Well, 
It's time, let's taste this because it just looks incredible. The juices are still just abundant. The color is perfect. It's a perfect match with the vegetables. Let's taste. You know, veal is one of those meats that you don't see that often on menus, but when it's there and it's good, it's like an incredible experience. So let's go. Whoa. That's incredible. It's so velvety and juicy and tender and has such good flavor. So often veal kind of is flavorless and this is just packed with flavor. It's so good. This just cuts beautifully. It's so soft, it's so tender. Wow. Mm. I know in every video I say it's like the best thing I've ever had, but, but I mean it. This is seriously the best veal I've ever eaten. It's really incredible. I mean, you're, you're gonna love this. This is gonna be such a spectacular holiday dish. Could you imagine bringing this out for a holiday dinner for Rosh Hashanah or for a special occasion, a big family gathering? It's gonna be amazing for, the, for that sort of entertaining. Mm, so good. Um, you want to pair it with really bold flavors because veal is, is subtle and it's sweet. It's, the veal itself is not as bold as, a, you know, as, as red meat, as fully grown steer. So you want to pair it with things that kind of really pop too so they balance each other out. It's great. I mean, the roasted garlic, the herbs, the vegetables on that, amazing. And the meat is just incredible. It's the best veal. You have to make this. So thanks for joining me again today in the Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen. I'm Chef Erica, in case you can't remember that. And, um, you know, we hope to see you again. We post new video content every Sunday on our YouTube channel at 2 o'clock. So check us out. We've got so many great videos now, and we're doing all sorts of great things with meat and with fish now, too. So thanks for joining us, and I'll see you again soon. Subscribe to our channel now and set your notifications so you don't miss our latest recipes and chef-led tutorials. Then head over to prairiestreet.co to shop for your next big meal.